welcome to the Nikki Clark Show. And how are you doing? Excellent. I love that. Wow. It's a full crowd. Thank you so much for making the decision to be here on this Friday night. And uh, it is such an amazing and blessed evening. Uh, I am your host, Nikki Clark. And the Nikki Clark Show is about transforming lives one story at a time. Uh, we invite people from all walks of life to come and share their heart stories, their stories of empowerment and upliftment. And we have so much to learn from everyone tonight. So first up, we have an incredible woman who is doing amazing things for the community. She is a um, pastor. She's also an educator and an author of children's books. So please put your hands together and welcome Dorette Homer to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. It's so good to see you. Thank you. Nice to see you too. Awesome. But you know, you know, face to face, we've been yes. communicating you know, uh, virtually in that, but it's good to see you here. Thanks for having me. And, uh, you're more than welcome. So tell me a little bit about your background leading up to becoming a children's author, and congr congratulations on that, because I know it's not an easy feat. Thank you so much. Well, um, to speak in respect to my background leading up to be becoming uh, an author, it's only fitting that I include and also share briefly my history um, my beginning in my country of origin. So, Nikki. <laughs> what's the country? So, I was born in Kingston, Jamaica. Yes. How many Jamaicans out there? <laughs> I'm just waiting for her to say that. Yes, yes. You saw the hands go up. Yes, mm -hmm. I was born into a large family of eight siblings. Wow. Five boys and three girls. So, in the 1970s, my mom, she uprooted the family and immigrated to Canada. And so she wanted us to have a better life, way of life. And so my journey in Canada, be it, you know, getting an education and so forth, I did not know exactly what I wanted to be. Um, I had three career paths in, in mind. I had a doctor, uh, labor and delivery nurse, and also a fashion designer. So those were the three career paths that I, taught, I pondered on. Doctor and fashion designers, like... Yes, yeah. exactly, exactly. So I didn't know exactly what I wanted to be. So during my, my high school years, I um, thought about, pondered about those career paths that I would take. However, when it came on to post-secondary studies after I completed my high school and journeying into my post-secondary studies, I made a complete turnaround, a different direction. I went into finance and, and accounting. So that's the career path that I took. And so I worked a number of years in that career field. Right. And afterwards, um, you know, in 1992, we had a major recession. And so companies were laying off and um, a lot of companies were closing down. So I, you know, I didn't want to sit around and wait. So I did a proactive thing to do and I went back to school and did, got qualified to work with um, special needs, um, individuals who have um, mental um, disabilities, mental right. health disabilities. Right. And so I worked in that, you know, that career for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And um, after working in that career, I transitioned from that into working with special needs kids with the school board. And so I would say that that is the, the start of me wanted to write a book, even though at that time, Nikki, I did not have an idea that I would write a book, but I could see where it, it was the, the, the steps, the steps started for me to write my book. But at that time, it was not revealed to me. I did not know I would be writing a book during that time. Okay. Well, I, I think we, we share a lot of common paths because um, I too was, I was kind of given the choice to be either a doctor, a lawyer, or a family disgrace. Wow. Right? Um, so I, uh, you know, you know, strict Jamaican parents. Exactly. So I, I went the teacher route. So I was a teacher for many years. Wow. And then, um, yeah, then it just came upon this opportunity to be an author. So right. there we go with the, with the author part. But I'm so proud of you uh, for what you have um, accomplished. And this is your first book, right? Hi, Miss Homer. Yes. Okay, excellent. So what was the motivation to, to write for children? 
Well, Nikki, I got into the school board and I started working with special needs um, individuals. Um, I started off as an educational assistant and then I transitioned into becoming a teacher. And over the years, I've worked with students from junior kindergarten up until to grade 12. Mm -hmm. And during those years, I've had, I can't count the many times that students would come up to me and said, Miss Homer, what is wrong with your arm? Mm. We want to know, I want to know. Right. And so, because usually I would answer your questions, but I felt within myself that I didn't do it much justice because you have only have like a 40 minute period to teach and there's so much to do within a day. And there are so many kids that are coming up wanting to know what is, um, you know, why is the reason my arm was made the way it is. Right. And so I thought about, you know, um, packaging myself in, in terms of um, creating a, a play or a skit. Mm -hmm. I wanted to market myself in, to sell the idea of coming into school boards, hoping that they will, you know, buy into the idea to have someone come in and do presentation to students. And so... Um, that was my original intent to do that, that I would just reach a wider audience of students mm -hmm. rather than speaking to them individually. Okay. And so, Nikki, when I w started writing my skit and my play, um, the pandemic hit. And so because we had all the shutdown and um, the lockdowns, everything was uncertain. We didn't know what would happen, like when schools would be reopened mm -hmm. and if they would even, you know, welcome outsiders back into the school. So I was kind of like torn between, I didn't know exactly what to do. So one day I was sitting and I was really thinking about it seriously. And I was like, oh, I have this great idea, but now it feels like as if it's falling to the wayside. Right. But then the idea just came, the thought that came, just came to my head, why don't you turn your idea into a book? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and into a book. Yeah. There you go. That's my book. Hi, Miss Homer. <laughs> Hi, Miss Homer. And, and, and basically the, the book, I mean, it's beautifully illustrated, by the way. Who illustrated this book? So it was illustrated by um, it, Mr. Islam. Is um, I outsource it in, from someone in Bangladesh. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Excellent. Because it was just too expensive to do our traditional publisher sure. to publish the book yes you have options yes marketing options but it, it's beautifully done and then it speaks to um just the children's curiosity as to who you are and and exactly. you know and and i love the fact that you've you've taken um how um you know everyone is made differently and and spun it around to empower others right to accept their their differences and their uniqueness exactly yeah awesome and and then this book that you have uh, compliments to my mommy. What, what, uh, what can we learn from reading this? Well, the idea behind compliment to, compliments to my mommy is generated with my daughter. When she was at a very young age, for Mother's Day, she gave me a jar filled with different pieces of papers with nice words, um, sentences on it, you know, complimenting me on, you know, how I look, how I dress, mm -hmm. how... I take care of her and so forth. So I had the jar tucked away for many years. So on one year I was cleaning up and I came across it and I revisited all those words that were on the papers. And, and so I thought, why not put it into a book? And that's what I, I did. And so I dedicate this book to my daughter, Dream. Yes. Her name is Dream? Her name is Dream. Oh, okay, well, Dream is right there in the back. Yes, she is here Taking to support me, snapshots. yes. And uh, who else is here? Who uh, of your fan club? Well, my husband is here. My husband of almost 30 years. Uh, we should clap for that. <laughs> That's huge. Some people don't last 30 minutes. <laughs> so congratulations. And my young son, David, is here. My older son, Dondre Homer, is... Um, I know Dondre. You do know Don? Oh, yeah, yes, he I was on your him. show, too. Yes. Yeah, he's amazing. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> so he couldn't make it. I invited him, but... Fantastic. Yes. Well, again, uh, huge congratulations for what you've done and the legacy that you're leaving uh, to empower others, especially children, stretching them to understand uh, where they belong in the world and exactly. to appreciate other people. So where can people purchase these books? So my books are on Amazon. It's on Ingram Spark and Barnes and Noble as well. 
Okay. Yes. And where can people follow you on social media? So they can follow me on social media on um, TikTok. It's um, Dorit Inspires. And on Instagram, it's Dorit Homer. Fantastic. Yes. All right. Well, thank you again. Thank and you. Uh, I hope I can get a couple of signed copies of yes. the book. Yes. Fantastic. Sure. All Definitely. Right. All right. Thank you so much. Dorit thank Homer, you. everyone. Okay. Reach out to her on social media. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Nikki Clark Show. Thank you so much for tuning in. And how are we doing? <laughs> Amazing. Every time I look out, the audience multiplies. I love that. Keep it coming. Next time I glance, another 20. Fantastic. Well, you're here on the uh, Nikki Clark Show live on Go Live TV. And uh, so excited to be here to share some more important, empowering stories. And I have to say that uh, this woman has been um, a good friend to the show for many years. Uh, we stay connected, and I love everything that she's doing in the community. She is a business owner. She's a mom. She has her daughter out here in the audience. Uh, and she also has um, a really incredible story that she's going to share about her time in Thunder Bay. So please put your hands together for the founder of B323, Michelle Rosetta. <laughs> Thank you, Nikki. Thank you so much always for being so welcoming and gracious. I do appreciate it. But we're going to start with gifts first. I like gifts. Yeah, it's Thank your hottie you. bomb, but also oh. your it's Stop the Sag tea bag, which goes into the conversation, <laughs> the questions you had wanted for me. So that is a new, new product, and it's... Um, it is an offtake from the clinical herbalism that I just finished. So I want you to have one. Stop the Sag <laughs> tea bag. <laughs> Explain yourself, Michelle. You like to be a little spicy. I don't know which sag do you speak of. <laughs> Everything's well, firm. But it goes into the inflammation okay. question, right? Okay. You would present the, the inflammation question, yes. and that is a big deal, right? It because is. we don't, uh, we are so used to being told that um, what you put on, right, right is, is going to be your quick fix. And yes, what you put on is very important. It is because you're feeding your skin. You are nourishing this part, and it's the largest organ. Using um, good and uh, high vibe and 
nutritious elements on your skin is very important. We've talked a lot about that. Yes. But um, with the clinical herb herbalism, which I finished over the last three years, um, I really realized, I, well, I wanted to be able to serve my customer base in a greater way. And people used to come to me, you know, I was at the markets in Davisville and they'd show me their wounds. <laughs> but there's a part where people have to understand it's also you have to take care of the internal. The internal part. So what I put together there was some herbs and some plant medicine that um, generally most people can use them. You all, it's plant medicine and plants are potent. So you always want to do your homework before you start using something. Check it out. Make sure there's no contraindications. But in there, I put like nettle and um, primrose and uh, some really nice cleavers. And what those do is they internally strengthen the cellular tissue. Okay. So that ends up... Um, the connective tissue on the outside does tighten and it brightens. And stops the sag. And stops the sag. Gotcha. <laughs> I, you know, just name alone. You know, names are, we're, we're both, we know marketing. Words are do, powerful. Do you know how yes. many ladies in their, their 70s that walk up and they're like, stop the sag tea bag. They love it. Yes. They're like, I'll take one of those. I'll take two. I'll take two. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Well, thank you so much. That's well, very yeah. kind of you. And the interesting thing is the nettle in there. The nettle. So, I did my uh, thesis on it, and just so everyone knows, it's very cool. So nettle actually turns M1 macrophages into M2 macrophages. And what that is, <laughs> so in our cells, we have <laughs> macrophages are, a, they're a diverse group of white blood cells. Okay. So that's the part that you know when you think about eating up all the little pathogens. Okay, so what happens is when bacteria comes in, your body's like, oh my God, there's a foreign invader. Okay, and so what it, it that's does. What that's the voice they use? Oh my God. <laughs> In, in my <laughs> internal monologue. <laughs> and that, yeah, the T cells would be like a different voice. But anyhow, <laughs> so what they do though is we get an inflammatory response. And we've talked about this before. Yes. When you get rashes or you get boils or when you, you know, when your body Eczema. says it's not yeah. happy yeah. or the cracks even in the feet. Right, right. So what nettle does and what other plants do, which is very cool with the inflammation, mm -hmm. is they turn it into M2 macrophages. So basically they tell the M1 stand down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And they end up um, turning on, so activating the M2 macrophages. And what those do is they produce, they can produce different elements, but uh, collagen, and they start to rebuild um, the, the, the uh, cellular matrix, right. and they start to wound heal. Okay. So that's why it's so cool in terms of inflammation and fine lines if you actually protect the cells, it reduces the deterioration and then hence reduces fine lines. Got it. You understand yeah. that? I think I think you broke it down really beautifully. Would you agree? <laughs> I, I well, get you it. can always go to be23.ca. I have my blog there, so I've done some two really good uh, um, articles on on the nettle. Fantastic, and I and I should also mention. Uh, Congratulations on your work with uh, Eco Eco Parent, Parent Magazine. Oh, Eco yeah, Parent is wonderful. Yes. Yeah, so it is really wonderful, and we try. So I do write for them, and we do have the True Beauty Confessions podcast, which, which I you, was on. You were you. on, and it was awesome. And definitely, everyone has to listen to that episode, especially the the bathing suit part at the end it was like yes. boom, mic drop. It was yeah. good. <laughs> it was really good. Yeah. Uh, it but, is really good. Yeah. No. So the True Beauty <laughs> Confessions, and basically, we are we're talking about. Um, the evolution of beauty and, and what we're bringing to the table and, and evolving in that and, and, yeah. and embracing it. But I think leveling up. Mm -hmm. We're at the place mm -hmm. where we're leveling up. And beauty is a vibe. It is a vibe. Yes, definitely. Vibe away. Yeah, keep it vibing. Um, I just wanted to, uh, you know, share some of my mm -hmm. own, some stuff that you may understand. Um, I have some property in Jamaica and uh, oh. we're looking into um, farming certain herbs as well. Oh, um, and Moringa? you're inviting me? Well, I'm sharing that <laughs> we, we could probably talk. It could be a business venture later on, but uh, we're growing Moringa. Um, okay. And then lemongrass. So w what are some oh. of the good things with that? I'm learning. Well, lemon, they're antibacterial okay. for sure. That's lemongrass is amazing. And, and that's, again, um, the plants are full of flavonoids and antioxidants and all those amazing things. But lemongrass is amazing just to even um, put into a diffuser. You would know this, a diffuser, right? And it's going to go throughout the air, and it actually reduces um, pathogens in the air. Okay, so we'll talk after. We'll, let's talk. I I'm, yes, we're definitely going to talk. You know, it's so funny. I actually, I literally came out of a snowstorm to get here. 
What? Yes. What part I of the world? I feel like I am an emissary coming from the northern <laughs> kingdom and the dead, the army of the dead's at the door. Honestly, the plane flew out of like a snowstorm with ice from where? pellets. I'm not joking. Thunder Bay mm. is not even a joke. It is so real. And so I, I feel like I'm in Jamaica right now. Yes. That, that, is that not sad? I got, I got off the plane. I'm like, oh, it's balmy here. Yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So what was the temperature when you left Thunder Bay? Well, it was under zero anyways. I think it was about four or five, minus five. But then... It was just under that, so that's why it was the slushy pellets and everything. It was bad weather. Was, oh, my gosh. I was so happy. I was, I, was like, please, I was like, please, please let the plane get out. Like, I was envisioning it coming out of this cloud of snow. <laughs> yes. And then we landed Into in the this sun. balmy Toronto. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And, and balmy traffic. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> we survived. Well, I, uh, but so okay, so Thunder Bay, and you're yes. here. Um, tell us about Thunder Bay, living there, and, and some of the situations. Well, interesting that you're enough. Facing. So you know, the, I mean, I was in Tor Toronto. Was very good to me in terms of my business, and and I raised my kids here, and it was a really beautiful community with the farmers markets and musicians yes. and all of that. They had a really great um, access to incredible people. And then throughout the last two years, I had decided I got my clinical herbalism and then I realized maybe I shouldn't be hustling so hard and I had that CSF fluid leak, right? So my, my brain stopped floating. Mm. <laughs> so, and it's, it's so funny though, cause it's, you know, I have a horrible, see, I have no filter. Because at this age, we worry about other things falling. <laughs> yes. My brain was falling. I'm like, serious? So I did go through a whole healing process with that. But then I was like, maybe I need to be back in my roots and right. back home. And I wanted to be closer to family. And because of clinical herbalism, I really thought, this is a great social media, you know, a shift. I can, like, have pictures of me picking goldenrod, you know, because I used to have the very, like, the pinup which I still love doing. But I was thinking, oh, I'll just you know, like, be picking goldenrod in these baskets on social media. <laughs> Anyhow, so that was my business plan. And mm. also my parents are up there and we have a homestead. Right. And up there you can build multiple buildings. So I was thinking I'll make my cute little tiny house and I was going to set up the manufacturing space on there mm -hmm. to be able to bring in apprentice and whatnot. And then what happened was, and this is what's happening all across Ontario and Canada, and I want people to know, like, what happens is um, Toronto can be insular in terms of this is where things are moving and shaking, right? right? right. But a lot of Canada is small communities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And those small communities are really being attacked on a lot of levels right now in regards to um, our own health and safety of community. And what had happened to my parents and, and sub subsequently our whole family is, you know, January 16th, they get this acquisition property. Um, it's an expropriation package. Mm -hmm. So this is a homestead. It's my grandmother's land. And we've been there for a very long time. And our neighbors, that's where their, grand their grandfather was born, right? So that's what this community is like. And basically, Hydro showed up and said, well, we, we need your, your land and, and your property. And that's Excuse my- Excuse me? Yeah. No, seriously, my Just parents like are that. 72 years old, mm -hmm. and and what has happened is, and because I know we only have um, a succinct amount of time, but um, they never put our community into the workshop. So they said we've been doing this since 2019. Sorry, you didn't know. They never consulted us, and it's in the documentation. Mm -hmm. And so this lack of due process is from the beginning of this project to now. And instead of being held accountable for that. Um, they're, they simply are bulldozing through wow. and attempting to save space, save face. And the problem is, is that we just need, uh, like they said, well, we need more electricity for electric cars. I just need everyone to know electric cars don't work up north. <laughs> Don't? No, it's too cold. My, I, I know because I had an electric engine in my vehicle and we had a problem first, first winter, but we just want people to know that there is priority differences between Northern Ontario and Southern Ontario. And, and we just need this story down here because mm -hmm. it's good people up north. And we need, um, to pe we need uh, you know, politicians and community members to understand that all our communities are worthwhile. Right. And that our, our seniors are worthwhile and our children. And the problem with these hydropower lines, because they'll say, oh, well, there's already one there. 
Canada, and that's the one thing I want to get out to, Canada is not talking about the electromagnetic radiation that comes off these high voltage lines. Okay. They refuse because it is our high, like it is our most used renewable resource in sense. Mm -hmm. But we should still be talking about it. Okay. And, and so if they put a double one in, it means it's creating this massive field of EMRs, right. which contaminates water and wildlife and all these things. And that's what we're trying to get to the table and we want others to know. Yeah. And if anybody knows about anything, <laughs> we, want, we want to hear from you. And they can check that out at it's N-O-T-L info.ca so neighbors on the line <laughs> info.ca and our neighbors we have to remember our neighbors go from one one side of the country to the other and all we want is um, to be heard and in northwestern Ontario they have the space to go around mm -hmm. it's simply cheaper for them to take out the community so what a shame. it is a shame and and a lot of communities are going through this right now mm -hmm. and um, you know, that's the other begs the question, why are I, I'm a business person, why am I paying taxes anymore? Mm. If they can show up at your house and say, I'm sorry, we need your home. And what people have to understand too is up there, we don't have anywhere to go. Mm. My parents have nowhere to go. And our assessment values are so low, they can't give you, they, they won't give you the return you would need to replace a retirement, to replace my retirement, right. and then replace the kids. That's that's a solidity of property that's bought and paid for, right? right. So always that was supposed to be our foundation as a family, mm -hmm. and we're not the only ones. So this is what's happening to well over a thousand people. So it's about 300 homes that are gonna be impacted in this 500 meter swath away from this other hydro line. So that's what we're dealing with. And the positive part is though, I've learned wonderful stuff about community initiative and community is empowering, it is strong. And when people come together on a unified cause of common cause, it is powerful. Yes. Everyone laughed at me when they said, Hydro will never come to the table. And I said, oh really? So, you know, we don't have the results we want, but they did have to come to the table. And our community really showed up for each other. So community initiative is really your greatest leverage I can see. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, being um, being an activist is uh, very it's important. It's tiring. It's I, I left Toronto. I was like, I'm tapping out. <laughs> That's it. Two years. I'm tapping out. I am done. I'm going home. No more battles. That's literally. I said, I said no more battles. I'm going home to pick goldenrod, and that is it. And then meanwhile. Because I said no battles unless they come to my back door. So I am so concerned I did that to myself. But sure enough, what comes to my back door? Yes. And I can't walk away. It's no, one of those ones you can't. And you don't have to do it alone. So mm -hmm. tell us, how can we help you? Well, I would highly just check out that website because there's so much resources there. It's the notlinfo.ca. And really, um, it's it's awareness. It's mm -hmm. letting people, I kind of feel like there's that Dr. Seuss, we're talking about books, <laughs> children's <laughs> books, but there's that one where it's like Whoville and Whoville is going to be blown off this little dandelion puff and they have to yell loud enough. They're like, we're here, we're here. And then finally they get the little who girl to go on the top and she's like, we're here. And then like, the, they don't blow the puff away because they finally hear the community. So I kind of feel like I'm coming down from Whoville and I'm like, we're here. Mm. So we need people to be aware. We need people also, it is um, knowing your self-worth. It does not matter who you are, where you come from, knowing your self-worth, claiming that self-worth and claiming it for each other. That's mm. what changes the, the culture of community, right? Absolutely. And it reminds people that we still, even though it, it, we may be far, technically we are all neighbors. We are. And however you treat your neighbors, how you treat yourself, and you know that one. Oh, I know that one. Love thy neighbor like yourself. Yes. Thank you so much, Michelle. Um, I'm 100% behind you, and yeah. uh, I really appreciate what you've done to make yourself heard and to uh, mm -hmm. amplify the voices for those who can't speak on their behalf. So thank you, thank you for what you do. Please, Michelle Rosetta. Thank you.
reach out to her on social media. Uh, B23.ca so, is her website as well. Yeah, B23.ca and at Hottie Bomb, H O T T Y B A L M, for, for all, all Hottie Bomb needs. All things to keep you on All saggy. things Hotties. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, thank all you right. so Come much. Come back anytime. I will. Okay. I, I will. It's balmy down here. It's ba <laughs> Hottie Bomby. <laughs> thank you so much. We'll be back. Someone told me that if you want to manifest your future husband, you got to put it out there. So this song is dedicated to my future husband, wherever he is. You got me. Welcome back to the Nikki Clark Show. Let's do a wellness check. How you doing? <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Yes, uh, it's, it's been a wonderful Friday, and we have so much more uh, to share with you. And, uh, you know, we're, we're about celebrating um, wellness, health, beauty, uh, all that moves the needle forward in people's lives on a personal and professional level. And I am super excited to meet Mrs. Mississauga. She's here to grace the stage and tell us about her journey. So please put your hands together for Fumi Akaka. Thank you. Thank you so much. So good to be here. This Thank evening. you. Oh, it's a pleasure. What a beautiful picture behind us. Wow. Just beautiful, stunning. Beautiful, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's Would me. you agree? Yeah, I love the I love the fro. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, tell me a little bit about uh, your background. What made you decide? What motivated you to enter into a beauty pageant, Mrs. Mississauga? Yeah, thank you. Really nice to be here. Thank you. And um, I'm originally from Nigeria, uh, where I spent more than thirty years of my life. <laughs> And to come in here some three years ago on a cold summer evening. <laughs> <laughs> cold summer evening. Yeah, cold, right, for me, because it's a sh shock, right? Coming from a warm uh, climate very, and, very you know. Warm, yes. But then my heart was really very warm, you know, for the opportunities that we can have for myself, my family, and our lovely children. Yes. So we are really grateful to be here, and it's been an incredible journey so far. And how did I get here? <laughs> so since I was a child, I've always loved to be a beauty queen, you know, reading about... Very fitting. You're <laughs> beautiful. Thank you. I saw Naomi Campbell, and... Um, I just felt I look like her, <laughs> and you know that really inspired me to want to become a beauty queen, a model, you know. And something happened that really put a stop to that, and it was a really dark time of my life. But then here I am today, being a Mrs. Mrs. Saga, representing my city, you know, for Mrs. Canada United World. And 
yeah, that's it. Well, that's fantastic. And, y you know, I didn't realize that, uh, I know I always knew about it, Miss Canada or Miss Universe, but I didn't realize that there was a Mrs. version. Myself, it's too. You know, so let me tell you about what happened some years ago when I was a teenager. You know, I always wanted to become, like I said, a beauty queen, but I had an accident and it really made me so devastated. I was... I was at the prime of my life. I had some scars all over my body, my lips, you know, and I had so many questions like, don't I, wasn't I, well, this, wasn't this meant to be? And I just gave up on all my dreams. I was a shell of myself. I just gave up on everything because I lost my self-confidence, my self-esteem. And that was it for me, you know, all my dreams about becoming a beauty queen just down the drain. But then I just met a lady at a volunteering um, gig I went for, and we just struck it up from there. And she said, you should be Mrs. Mississauga for Canada. Mrs. United. I'm like, what's that? Because I never, my age, being married, I just felt there was nothing like that for me again. And then when I started researching about the pageants, um, Canada United World, I discovered that they actually, there's no limit, there's no age limits. Miss, they have a Miss category, they have a Mrs. category. In fact, there was a 61 year old lady in wow. my division. Yes. That's amazing. And I'm telling you, it was so inspiring that we can all be what we want to be whenever you want to. There is no late time to start achieving your goals. Oh, I love that. That's beautiful. And uh, how long is the process uh, to... Okay, I guess maybe walk us through the process. How do you get involved? Uh, do you have to um, be judged in front of a panel? How do you get selected? Yes, yeah, so for the Mises, Mrs. Saga, all you need to do is just go online and check them out and apply, which was what I did. I actually was, I just decided to do it because when she told me memories of what should have been, you know, just kept coming and I was, oh, maybe this is actually the time for me to do this. And I was grateful for that accident back then because in hindsight, I felt it was a journey for me to discover myself for who I am and not rely on my beauty. Just my inner beauty, no scar can actually change right. who I am. Right. And I had to accept that. I had to accept that I love myself despite my scars, despite my imperfections, because I've always felt, oh, you have to be perfect head to toe for you to be a model or a beauty queen. So, you know, tears was, were just gushing from my eyes that day that, oh, I could actually still achieve my dream. I, I could actually see myself as a beauty queen despite all these years. So I applied. And I'm like, oh, let's see. Let's see what will happen. And, you know, they ask you questions. You submit, like, a resume. Why you should be the beauty queen representing right. your city, right? So I did that. And out of the many um, applications they had, I was chosen as Mrs. Mississauga. And that's the beginning of the journey. Because then we start prepping for the big day which is coming up on may 14 by the oh, way coming up soon okay. yeah very soon so you have to prepare yourself i read um books on self-confidence affirmations you know you do trainings on how to talk how to work all of those things and that's the stage we are right now so okay. we're prepping for the big day and, and where is the unveiling? Where will it be, the venue? Um, it's going to be in London, Ontario. Okay, I was just there yeah. yesterday. Yes. Awesome. Okay. So uh, how can we support you there? Yeah, well, we still need, I still need sponsorship for some of my pageant needs. And whoever wants, to, wants me to be 
um, like an ambassador for their business where they sponsor some of my needs, you're very well, um, welcome. And um, I'm on social media at Fumia Kaka. You can follow me to support as well. And just bring business my way whenever. Thank you. <laughs> That's amazing. We'll give you another round of applause Thank for that. Thank you. So I know you have a, a really inspiring message um, for both uh, women and men um, that, you know, what I'm hearing from you is that it's never too late to start over. It's never too late to, you know, uh, go for your yeah, go, go for, your, for your gold. Yeah, go for whenever, your gold. Whenever the opportunity presents itself, just grab it. Don't think about what is not perfect. Don't think about what you need to do to ensure that you get it. Just start at the time that that opportunity presents itself. And much more than that, growing up back in Ilori, Kora State, Nigeria, you know, we had this... My community had this thing um, about beauty queens being immoral, you know, they are the devil's um, children or stuff like that. It's another message I want to pass across to Christians like myself that you don't have to lose your values being a beauty queen. You can still be true to yourself and still represent your inner beauty. Let people see that inner beauty in you and still hold on to your values. That is you being, um, making a positive impact in your community. And to immigrants like myself as well, your dreams are still valid. Whenever, wherever, just go ahead and start building yourself. Dust off the debris and rebuild. Thank you. Oh, I love that. What a wonderful message. Thank you. So you've inspired me to be a Mrs. Yeah, Oakville. go for it. Go for <laughs> it. Next year, please do it. Really? Yeah. I'm, ju I'm just I'm just looking for a, an opportunity uh, to be a Mrs. So. Um, just putting it out there. We'll see who watches tonight, and then yeah, yeah, maybe it's Mrs. Never Oakville too is on late. the horizon. Just go. <laughs> and you know, you don't have to be slim, tall to become a Mrs. Just. Embrace your beauty. Your inner beauty is right. right there in everybody. That's what I believe. And then go for it. Awesome. You know, um, there are many people watching, especially uh, youth. And, and I'm very passionate about, you know, uh, mentoring youth and, and uh, making sure they, they get the right values and to pour into them. Um, in your language, can you speak to youth watching right now? Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't get me started. Okay. So, <laughs> well, I'm Yoruba and Bawane. Um Bawane. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> she understand my language. Oh, I feel so That's so good. Dadani. So, but one what on wo mi? Mo fe ki e mo pe ko si igbati o to abito ye. Lati bere sin she, nko to efe she. Lati jeki gbogbo, ani yon yi. Lati jeki gbogbo, edu okon yi. Lati jeki gbogbo, ife yi, te fe she, la ye. Lati she, igba ki igba, lo re ko re. Te ba fe, lati jeki gbogbo, nko to efe la ye yi. Koshele, Edide, Eshe, Nikia Mosa, Nikia Kia, Olon, Adewa, Pelui, Aron, you know, Lati Jackie will be fair in Kyoshe, Eshe Gorni. Eshe, thank you. All right. Thank you so much for gracing Thank us tonight. Thank you for having really, me. Really, really great uh, being here. I'm grateful. Thank fantastic. you. Thank you. And tell us how can people follow you on social media? Yeah, please follow me at Fumi Akaka. F-U-N-M-I-A-K-A-K-A. -A -A. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Fumi Akaka, please follow her on social media and support her pageantry, Mrs. Mississauga coming hey, up soon, May fourteenth, and, and soon to be crowned Mrs. Canada. Right? Soon to be crowned Mrs. Canada. <laughs> That's what's up. You met her here first on the Nikki Clark Show. We'll be right back.
Someone told me that if you want to manifest your future husband, you got to put it out there. So this song is dedicated to my future husband, wherever he is. You got me. show how you doing yay yay I looked across and more people came thank you so much for being here I really do appreciate it and uh, the show is about transforming lives one story at a time and I have to say that uh, I'm celebrating 15 years 15 years the show's been going on October will uh, be the 15th year October actually 18th is when I started the show in 2008 and um, yes, so you're all invited right back here, October 27th, for the 15th anniversary of the Nikki Clark Show. And we have some incredible performances. Um, Kiara Lea, she's an R&B soul singer. Uh, we also have um, Justin Hamilton, he's a gospel rapper. And then uh, we have Abel Maxwell, who is a jazz um, performer from Ottawa. 
and, and so much more, and I'll perform. So we're going to have some performances, cake, and lots of great stories. So I hope you can come. All right, so mark your calendar, October 27th. All right, so we're back again with uh, some you know, great stories to motivate you. And uh, I have with me a, a full stage of, of family love. <laughs> Uh, there are actually three sisters who work together with this uh, amazing um, program for skin care. And I was just so uh, honored to have met them a couple of months ago. And uh, they really moved me with their story. So please welcome Candice, Camille, and, and Christine, the Oliver sisters, Q style. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having us, Nikki. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. You were the only sister I didn't meet at the time. That was that's Candace, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> well, welcome. Um, so yes, it's uh, it's been a very exciting time for you. I just saw the post about uh, something to do with Vanity Fair. So tell us about that. Yes. So we're so excited to finally announce that we were a part of the Vanity Fair Power of Women Gala event. So our products were in each of the bags, which were about 400 bags. So we were so excited to finally announce that. So it's, it's huge, thank you, thank you. So yeah, no, it was, it was definitely a big deal and it happened uh, the beginning of this month. It was when the event happened, so. Okay, yeah. so, so name some, if you can drop some names <laughs> of uh, some celebrities that uh, you are you know, kind of collaborating with, with the gift <laughs> exchange. So for the Vanity Fair um, gala, a few of the honorees were Kelly Ripa. You also had um, Judy Bloom, um, and then you also had Rosie Perez. Okay. Just to name a few. <laughs> Judy Bloom. Yeah. Really, the children's author. The yeah. She was the like children's author. My yeah. favorite author growing up. Um, uh, God, it's it's me, Margaret. That's, That's one of my yeah. favorite yeah. favorite uh, books. So that is that is amazing. Thank you. Um, that is a huge feat, you know. So uh, I appreciate what you do. So tell us, um, how did this family business begin? How about you share? What was the motivation behind? I it? actually was the motivation behind okay. us <laughs> starting the business. Um, I have eczema, so. I started seeing boxes coming into the house and I was wondering what's happening. Mm -hmm. And Christine would start pushing things at me saying, try it, try it. Mm -hmm. uh, so after a lot of trial and error, a lot of sampling with our family, uh, we came up with our body butters here. Uh, Nikki, we have a thank you box for you, but we'll oh, get to you. that when we, when we sure. um, ask you to try it. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I was basically the, the reason why we started um, Cube Style. So it's made with ingredients that you can pronounce, everything found in nature. Um, just because I was trying the over-the-counter things, they just weren't working. Um, so we wanted to have something that everyone can use that mm -hmm. was good for them. Okay, fantastic. And, and that's important, you know, uh, reading uh, a label uh, for anything you're going to ingest, whether, you know, it's food or, you know, or thing you're going to apply on your skin, you have to be able to pronounce it, right? Exactly. So like one of the, the guests before us was saying, your skin is your largest organ, mm -hmm. so you need to take care of it. You have to make right. sure that you're using, you know, all natural things, things that you understand the purpose of, of the use. So that's why we came up with our um, our skincare brand. Okay. And, and how long has the business been around now? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this September, it's going to be three years. Three years. Yeah. So this is basically, we like to call it our COVID baby. <laughs> so we literally started the business September of 2020, but we actually started um, production and formulation in March. So literally when the world was shutting down and closing, mm -hmm. that's when we decided to just get a move on it. We were a bit bored because there's nothing to do. You couldn't go right. outside. So we might as well just start kind of formulating some stuff. And again, we used Camille as a guinea pig and it worked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we decided to go full speed ahead. And it's also thanks to our mother too, who was literally gave us a set date of September 11th is when we had to launch. And that was the firm, the firm deadline. <laughs> I love that. Okay. So uh, some goals were set. And, and I think, you know, you, you talked about um, COVID and, and people being in, in a period of pivot, right? The pivot time. Um, so many businesses kind of, 
exploded um, during that time and, and, and still flourishing like yours. So that's that's really amazing to, to tap into the creativity and saying, okay, let's look at the situation and how can we uh, make the best of it. So you turned that time into a skincare uh, opportunity. So tell me, um, I know the, the, the products are all natural and, and, and high uh, quality products, but uh, what are some of the areas that you kind of focus on? What areas of the skin? So for our um, body butters, we say it's body butter. So it's not face cream. Mm -hmm. It is actually for your neck down. Okay. So anywhere that you feel the driest, your elbows, your knees, the backs of your feet, even your feet themselves, your hands, your knuckles, um, you would want to use it because it's more concentrated than lotion. It doesn't contain any water. And what it does is it helps to hydrate your skin. So you're going to feel that moisturization as you use it. It's funny, like because we are made up of mostly water, right? Over 60%, but you're saying your product has no water. And, and why, no is, water. why is that? So shea is actually from a nut, so it, it's, it forms a butter. Okay. We also add almond oil and we add um, aspen bark, which is our natural preservative. It's found from trees, um, as well as whatever the essential oil to give it its scent. So the reason we don't use water is because it's highly concentrated. You don't need to pump, pump, pump it. Okay. You just need to use a fingertip. Okay. Everyone who's using <laughs> Shea, One please fingertip. use a fingertip. Not because a lot of people think that Shea is greasy, but you feel the need to use a lot because that's what you're used to with your lotion. Mm -hmm. You don't need to use a lot for it to work. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good to know. And, and uh, w what are some of the ways that you've reached out to the community, uh, Candace, to let people know about uh, Q-Style? So some of the ways that we've reached out, um, actually, we started um, with Black-owned TO. So everything has spiraled because of Black-owned TO in a good way. So one of our cousins, hey, cousin, <laughs> um, he told us to, I think you should do this market. So let's do that. And ever since then, it's just been go time. So. Uh, yeah, black owned teal really helped us to get going. So, and just to add on to what Candace said as well, too, that same market that she's talking about um, that we started with black owned teal, literally, we started the business in September and we did that market in November. Yeah. So, within just a couple, a couple months, yeah, two months. Um, we were mixing product for it. We didn't know what to expect because it was our first market, our first event. So we, again, we just went in there kind of like, oh, well, hopefully we at least mm -hmm. sell one or two products. And within a span of an hour, we sold out of everything. Yeah. <laughs> so we had to literally take orders, orders on, yep. yeah, we stayed the whole day, of course. And we were literally mm -hmm. taking orders by hand. And then the next weekend we did um, drop offs. Okay. That uh, three three locations. So that was pretty big. I think then is when we kind of knew that the business was definitely going to take off from there. Yeah, I would say, you know, <laughs> sold out in a couple of hours and yeah. just yes. Okay, back. So where's the lab? Where, where do you make the products? So we handcraft our body butters. It's mm -hmm. a family business. So when we say truly family made by three sisters, it is physically <laughs> made by three sisters. So we don't want to give you all of the juice, Nikki, where we actually make it, just in case someone wants to take our blueprint. Trade secret. <laughs> we haven't, we haven't, we haven't patented our, our blueprint yet. But um, when we say that it is a family business, it is truly a family business. Our junior ambassadors here, that's my niece. My dad helps us with the with the production. My mom is basically our money person, so she does our accounting. Is our mom here? You know, no, they're actually not, but they're watching. Hey, mom and dad. <laughs> um, you know, Candace does our research and development. Christine is the one who actually came up with the formula, and then I'm the salesperson. If you notice, I like to talk. So, <laughs> so that's that's really how our our business basically has um, made it. We're we're just and, family business, and how it's basically worked because everybody knows what they do well yeah. okay and nobody steps on each other's toes <laughs> it's like okay Candice I know you're gonna do the research and development the marketing so that's your expertise Camille I know you're gonna be doing the sales so I don't have to worry about that and then I just basically handle the day-to-day -day and looking for markets and opportunities and stuff like that so we 
all come together pretty well. I know it doesn't. It, it's unbelievable. I know. I just see another. <laughs> I, know. I, I see another uh, market opportunity to sell a book on how to have a happy yeah. family business. That's right. There you because, go. <laughs> you know, like I. I mean, I, I work with family too, but sometimes it's just like, oh. I love you. Well, I, really, lucky, I choose to love you. It, it's lucky for us that we are an odd number. So there's never a time when you have to um, worry about the fact that you could be split down the middle. There will always be a definitive answer. The thing with us is that we accept whenever the, the decision is made that that is the decision and we have to go with it. Um, you know, I'm the oldest, so I've known them all of their lives. Mm -hmm. So you kind of play to their, their personalities as well. Right. Um, but having a family business, and it was asked a lot, um, how is it working with your sisters? Well, I've known them all their lives. So yes. for me, it's easy. It's like, you know, we lived in the same house for umpteen million years. So mm -hmm. we, um, we come up with an idea in the, in the afternoon, or maybe it could be just through our discussion th during the day. And then we discuss it, come to a decision, and then by the next morning, we, we set a plan. So... Working with my sisters is is easy because I know them, really. Yeah. It's, it and would I be think it's how we were raised as well, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. Like how our parents raised us. There was no fighting. There was no hitting. There was no scratching or screaming or anything like that. Right. It's like you talk it out. You might not want to talk to that sibling for maybe a day. But then, <laughs> especially when it comes to business, yeah. you know, there's... Uh, there's money on the table, so yeah. <laughs> you mm -hmm. can't afford to not talk to your sibling right. for X amount of days or weeks or months. It's like, you know, there's a common goal that yes. you have that you set. And we, of course, respect each other as well, too. These are my two oldest, older sisters, mm -hmm. so there is that respect aspect as well. So, yes. for example, if there's something I want to do, but these two don't agree, then it, it's a no. <laughs> or if we really are you know, strong-headed with it, we would get our parents involved. Mm. And then ultimately, it's like, okay, whatever mom says. <laughs> yeah. So, so you defer to mom. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> pretty much. But usually, yeah, because it is an odd number, we're very, very lucky in terms of being able to make decisions, especially big decisions that we know that will affect the business in the long run. Mm -hmm. We kind of look at it like that. Will will that propel our business to where we want to go or what we want to do? And if the answer is yes, then we would proceed. And if it's not, mm -hmm. then you know it'd be a no. So I think okay. that's that's how that works. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Well, I, I can't wait any longer. Can I try what's in the nice box? Of course you can. May so I? May I? Okay. So this is one of our gift sets. So we've we've personalized it by saying thank you, Nikki. Thank it contains you. <laughs> it contains four four ounce jars. So this was something that we did during the uh, Christmas um, gift giving season for those customers that wanted to either um, give four separate gifts, give one gift of multiple scents, um, and then it had different flavor stories. So um, a I, flavor story. Yeah. So the, the first flavor story was um, holiday. So that contained our candy cane, chocolate, um, vanilla, and our champ, which actually is sweet orange, ginger, and vanilla. Um, the second flavor story was tropical. So that contained um, what I'm holding right now, which is our coconut scent, our co pina colada scent, which is coconut. Well, not the and, pina colada. Okay. <laughs> I got that one for you too. Um, I had a feeling you were going to like that. So um, yeah, it, it contained um, the pina colada scent as well as the vanilla and our clarity scent, which is um, lemon, lime, and eucalyptus. And then there was a choose your own box and then and a calm um, relaxation box, which basically contained our lavender um, and other scents as well. So this is for you, Nikki. I'm Thank just you. opening it for you. Yes. Smell, it. Smell it first. Smell it first. <laughs> oh yeah, that's good. It's a vacation in a bottle. That's a vacation. <laughs> that's Cuba in a little bottle right here. So all you have that. to do, Nikki, is exactly what Cuba. you're doing. <laughs> exactly what you're doing now. You don't need more than a than a. Um, yeah, it's, I, I don't have to like. You don't need to dig like into scoop. it. Scoop. That's it's right. Just a little rub, and I'm gonna go to the dry area. Yeah. Yes. Which would be my elbow. Ah. It just <laughs> absorbs right in there. Right in there. And it smells amazing. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. No, it feels satiny soft. Yay. Great. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, you got to try this. Um, amazing. So tell me, how can people purchase so the Cube are, Style products? We're online, um, www.cubestyle.com. Um, we're also in a few stores in Toronto. Um, we're in the W Hotel 
Um, public school, uh, that is their area where we do sell a few of our scents. We're also at the Old Spot in Ajax. We're in Hair Dome in Pickering and Black Owned Teal um, in Scarborough Town Center and in Square One. Um, yeah, that's where we are. Did I miss anyone? No. No, Not you, anyone, you but, but you can find yeah. us around the city at yes. um, Market. markets. Yeah. We usually have it on our social media. So um, these two are my social media people. I do not touch it. Um, She's the main one, Christine. <laughs> so if you want to know where we are close to you and around the city, you can always check our Instagram, which is at CubeStyle. Um, and we'll let you know where we usually are on a, on a weekend basis or a weekly basis. Oh, also as well too, I would like to add that um, because we use glass jars, we do have a recycling program. Oh, nice. So yeah, whenever you guys order, we do at our markets, we would give you a small card and it's like a loyalty program. So once you return your jars at any markets that we're at, we will stamp the amount that you give us and your 12th jar that you return, you get a free body butter on us. So yeah. That body butter is available at the market, so you get to basically come to the market, let us know which scent that you would like that we have available there, and yeah, you get it for free. So that's kind of our sustainability mm. recycle, you know. I love that. Type thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Giving back. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Beautiful, beautiful. Paying it forward. Well, I thank you so much. Uh, three beautiful sisters, um, family business. Uh, you're really an inspiration. So thank you so much. And, and uh, I love the gift. <laughs> thank thank you. you. Thank you so much. All right. So Cube Style, please follow them on social media. Three lovely sisters who are just doing wonderful things and giving back to the community. Thanks again. Thank you for thank having you. me. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Someone told me that if you want to manifest your future husband, you got to put it out there. So this song is dedicated to my future husband, wherever he is. You got me. Welcome back. Everyone good? Yes. Amazing. Well, I just want to thank you for, you know, uh, staying with us. Um, it's, uh, 
around the last uh, lap of the show, and uh, we still have so much more to share. Uh, and I want to uh, just take this moment to say a very special thank you uh, to our show sponsor, CEAO Canada, uh, transforming mental health care in Canada, one community at a time. And TEAO stands for Trauma Embodiment Association of Ontario. A uh, very special thank you to uh, the founder, Nicole Faulkner Brown, who is here. Thank you. You are a blessing. And her team members, thank you so much for everything you do. We really do appreciate you. Uh, we couldn't do this without you. And there's also a very special offering uh, that T. EAO has for you. If you would like to get involved in any of the programs, uh, there are some programs for leaders and educators, as well as peer-led uh, service directory resources and support for individuals. Any one of those that you'd like to be involved in, uh, there is a special promo code uh, that you can uh, add into the um, area when you're checking out, and it's the Nikki Clark Show. So just put the Nikki Clark Show promo code and you'll get a very special discount uh, and uh, courtesy of TEAO Canada. So thank you very much for what you're doing. Okay, you, you got to do this. This is amazing work. So thank you. Helping to heal the community. That's, that's very important. So um, we're, we're back uh, and uh, I am so, so um, impressed uh, with the body of work that I've been watching, uh, a podcast <laughs> available on Instagram and, and YouTube. Uh, he's a podcaster, he's a YouTuber, uh, he's a mortgage agent, and, and also the founder of Financial Solutions. And he's got really a, an incredible wealth of wisdom uh, to offer the community in, in the respect of finances. So I am so excited to introduce Roy Simon to you. Please welcome him. Thank you for having me. That was a <laughs> wonderful introduction, by the way. Very colorful. Um, and <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's, it's really, um, the pleasure is all mine. And I have to say that I'm a big fan. I, I go through your episodes and I like, and I'm like, hmm, I learned something today. So I appreciate what you do. But you had to have a journey to get there, right? Um, so tell us. A little bit about uh, you know your motivation, your inspiration to be, you know, kind of catapulted into the financial industry. How did that happen? Well, I mean, how much time do you have? <laughs> uh, you've got uh, a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a journey is definitely the word to use. It's been a long path to get here. Um, I would say it started primarily when I was buying my first house, and I bought my house pre-construction. So. Long story short, the way that works is you sign on that line for a certain price and they tell you it's going to be done at X date. And me thinking that everything was fine and dandy, I said, okay, when X date gets here, I'm going to just get my keys. Not realizing that I had to get a mortgage to close on said property. So okay. I was notified two months prior to closing that you need to have your mortgage. Where is it at? This is where we're at right now. Can you give us the information? And I'm like, what do you mean? What information? What are you talking about? You should tell me where my mortgage is. Isn't mm -hmm. that how this goes? Mm -hmm. And um, I had to scramble to figure out how to get a mortgage to close on this property so I don't lose my deposit. And I had to converse with a bunch of different mortgage agents and professionals in that space, in that time frame, to get the job done. Got yanked in a bunch of different directions, wasted a bunch of time and money. Um, ultimately, I did close, so I got my keys. But when I reflected on the, the, the whole journey to get to that point, I realized quickly that one, I should have been more prepared. Two, there should have been a lot more information out there for me to know what to do. Yes. And um, also re reflecting, I, I realized I got manipulated and taken advantage of because of my desperation in that moment. Mm -hmm. So um, I wanted to kind of be exactly what I wish I had access to in that time. So I set out to be the difference I wanted to see. And here I am today. I love that. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, you have a beaming wife there in the audience. She's, lovely. She's like, I love him. <laughs> Amazing. Well, th that that is definitely um, a, a really uh, like a raison d'être uh, for what you do. And um, you know, there's one of the episodes that I watched uh, about uh, you had like a truth moment. Uh, you were talking about uh, a time in your life when your credit score wasn't the best, uh, but you learned from that and you're able to teach on how to remediate the credit score. So can you tell us about how you can go about doing that and maybe some nuggets about um, the value of credit right. or, or as it relates to financial literacy? For sure. And 
the name, it starts with it's financial. Um, and just before I even got into this space, I used to have a YouTube channel. And that's where I used to share a lot of golden nuggets about how to have yourself in your best financial literate state and really just maximize your finances. And that was where I was just kind of just teaching little things here and there because I used to work at the bank. And I would tell all the information that I learned at the bank to the peers that I had. Can you tell us which bank? TD. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, right and um, that's where I kind of got my knack for just sharing information. Mm -hmm. And it started a lot with just the basics of having good credit because I don't know about you guys, but it's very difficult, especially in this time where we're seeing prices at astronomical highs, to buy everything cash. You're going to have to rely on credit yes. at some point. Yes. So if you want to go and get a new car, the chances of you having the full amount to buy that car outright is slim to none. And by the time you do have that amount of money, you need it's probably going to be on a new car you want that is more expensive than the one that you were saving up for. So you need to access credit and you need to be able to have good standing so that you can have the best type of prices associated, associated with that financing. So um, your credit history is one of the biggest things that are gonna help you determine having a good credit score. So that's why I really set out to, you know, resonate with the younger generation and, you know, keep your finances fly <laughs> so that it's something that you can actually take pride in and be confident in. And that starts with, you know, having good credit and starting credit from an early age. It's, mm. it's, not, a, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And having that history is so pivotal in how much of a credit score you're gonna have and just having the best financial position. So. Um, that's really where it begins and some of the mistakes that I made I like to share and be candid sure. about so when I had a credit score of 585 I said well you know what this isn't the end of the world I can fix this and here's how I did it and here's how you can too and also avoid getting into that situation to begin with so um, your credit is huge it's one of the main factors that help you get a mortgage and will help you you know not go through the hurdles that I had to clear when I get my first when I got my first house and um, it's just about knowing better so you can do better and mm -hmm. that's just what I take pride in doing Fantastic. Well, I appreciate your, you know, your candor. Uh, but for those who are um, learning the, the value of credit, uh, so a score you said of 580, would that that is Typically not the not best. On, not on the good side. Okay. No. <laughs> what what is a good credit score then? So you really want to be around that 680 mark and above. Um, a, a lot of people have this uh, undying affliction to have like an 800 and 850. And is it necessary? I mean, for the most part, you're going to have access to the same things that people who have a 680 or a 690 do, right? And it's just about being in a good standing, not necessarily the number specifically, if it's 891 versus it being 890, it's not that big of a difference. What you really wanna do is to make sure you're in the good standing, there's good and there's bad. You wanna be on the good side of things. So 680 and above is really where you wanna be to take advantage of the best type of pri pricing and the best type of treatment when it comes to seeking out credit. Okay, so so how do you bounce back? How do you remediate your credit score? Whew, well. How, um, how did you do it? <laughs> Uh, first and foremost, just identifying what I was doing wrong. Um, to, to really improve in any area in life, you've got to figure out where do I stand right now? What am I doing wrong? What am I doing right? What can I continue doing? What do I got to stop doing? Um, one of the biggest things that I was doing wrong was overutilizing my credit products. So one of the biggest things that help you determine what your credit score is, is your utilization. And what that means is how much credit do you have access to versus how much are you actually using? So if you've got a $1,000 credit card and you have a $300 balance on it, you're using 30%, that's 30% utilization. And that's right around where you want to stay. Going above 70% utilization is where you get into the red zone. So I was over leveraged and over utilizing a lot of my credit products. So what that really required me to do was be aggressive and be focused on paying down those balances so that I could show that I'm being responsible. I can handle these things because when you're over utilizing it, how you're looked at is you don't have full control over what it is you have access to, which is a bad thing. So that was the biggest thing for me. Um, and also making sure that you're just being on time and um, being very uh, diligent with your payments. So you don't want to be late and you don't want to be missing payments entirely. And that's just one of the biggest things that can help change your whole trajectory. And it's also, one I think, one of the easiest fixes. It was as simple as me just putting in a reminder on my phone. We all have our phones every single day. Reminder every month, first of the month, pay that bill. And it's, it can really be that simple. Okay, and and that's uh, really good um, advice. But what about people who don't have credit history? Good question. Um, credit history is one of those things where I think it's just a matter of not trying to do too much in, all in one swing. Um, you want to make sure you're establishing yourself as early as possible, and that way you're building your credit history over the course of time. Um, if you, it's it's based exactly what it is. It's credit history. You can't force 
time to take place in a short amount of time. So you, mm -hmm. what you want to do is get ahead of that horse early mm -hmm. and start as early as possible. So for example, when you're 18, get that small credit card and slowly handle that responsibly. Like if a, that's like a store credit card? Like a store one? Like Yeah, even yeah. Know, a Walmart credit card. Oh, okay. or My first credit card was a PC financial credit card. Mm. And there's nothing wrong with that because what it allows me to do is have a small credit, make myself get acquainted with how credit is used and not all, also mishandle a large amount of money and then be in a hole that's hard to dig out of if I have a tough time grasping the concept needed. So, you know, you start with a credit card, then before you know it, you have a phone bill, that also contributes to your credit score, then maybe you have a line of credit, maybe you get a car loan, make those payments on time, and before you know it, you have an entire resume of how your credit is actually kept track of, and that's really what lenders are gonna be looking at, and all the people and all the institutions that are you're gonna be relying on in the future can see, oh, okay, for the last 10 years, he's been doing this since he was a young lad, <laughs> to now. <laughs> a young lad, yes. and now he's, he's uh, doing fabulous. So uh, are you saying, um, if you very you put yourself in a really strict regimen of paying on time, um, you know, doing all the right things, you can bounce back like in six months, a year. What's realistic? So it, it's going to be um, circumstantial. It's going to be different from person to person. Um, for me, what it, it really it really depends on what is it that's making your score what it is. Mm -hmm. For me, like I said, it was that utilization, mm -hmm. and once I was able to bring those balances down to where they're they're supposed to be. Right. Um, based on the criteria, it quickly turned around and now I'm happily in the 700s. And that's in a matter of a couple of months, right? That wasn't too long ago. So I think a lot of the times we get down on ourselves and we're like, oh, I'm here, I'm at rock bottom. But the problem is we stay there or we mm -hmm. think it's hopeless and we do nothing. And doing nothing means your situation is not going to change. So you really got to figure out, okay, what am I doing wrong right now? And that might require talking to somebody and then doing the things that are necessary to change your situation. So for example, maybe someone else's problem is they've had a couple of late payments. Well, what you need to do then is get on the right track and make some on-time payments so those late payments are in the history, are in your, in your past. Mm -hmm. So everyone's remedy is gonna be a little bit different, um, but it, like I said, it just matter, it, it really just depends on you having those conversations and figuring out where you stand and figuring out what you need to do to get to where you wanna be. And that's um, that's amazing. And I, I think there there's some people who may have, um, you know, they put their head in the sand and they don't want to look at their credit. But it's it's important to uh, keep looking to see what's going on because we're in a time where there's identity theft and mm -hmm. it's it's happened uh, to you know close people uh, in my life and people have purchased things with their card unknowing to them right. and then they're affected. So, yeah. And, I, and, and even to speak to that point, like it is just largely, especially in my upbringing, in my community, money and finances is one of those things that nobody wanted to talk about. And it was a little bit uncomfortable and it was just something that was a little bit self-conscious for a lot of people. And I think that if you have a better understanding and you become more comfortable and you can feel fly about your finances, it helps you feel a little bit more comfortable having those conversations and then also identifying maybe what you could do better. Mm -hmm. And that's why maybe some of us stay in those places a little bit longer than need be because we don't ever address them. We don't talk about it. And then before you know it, a year passes by, right? And then that could have been a year that you used to fix your situation or improve your status, right? So right. For even to answer the question from before, like how long could something take? It starts with you. Mm. So true. So true. So what is next for you? Ah, next. Um, <laughs> I, um, I'm also a real estate investor. So I have four units that I own. Um, I live in one with my lovely partner and our son, um, and I rent out the other three. And my goal right now is to continue to share in information with people um, because I think a lot of people, a lot of the time, I, I get questions like, how do you do it? And I'm like, I was in a very, <laughs> you know, not a, a situation that I wasn't really proud of not too long ago. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I think is possible for a lot more people than they realize. So I really want to encourage and empower people and uplift people to realize that what you want isn't outside of your grasp and it's not impossible. It just starts with you figuring out the right information. And I want to be that starting point of the information that they probably need. Um, so continue to share that information, continuing to you know, grow my own knowledge and improve my own situation as well. And also I want to I wanna retire early and spend a lot of time with my family. And that's something I'm working hard towards as well. 
Oh, well, we applaud you for all of that. That is a wonderful accomplishment. And tell us, where can people find you on social media? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at flynancial.solutions. That's two Ys in financial. Um, and you can find me on YouTube as well, um, where I have changed it from you, uh, Who's Fly TV to Financial Solutions. So everything is all under one umbrella. Awesome. Thank you so much. Roy Simon, everyone. Financial Solutions. Please follow him on social media. And I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who's been part of the show. Thank you, all the guests. Thank you, show, uh, show sponsor, TEAO uh, Canada. We really appreciate you. Thank you. God bless you. And follow us, uh, the, the NikkiClarkNetwork.com and on uh, Instagram, NikkiClark31. So we'll be back again. And uh, we just want to keep those good stories out there to help move you uh, in the right direction personally and professionally. Thank you. God bless. We'll be back. Have a good night.